Sometimes in Oracle, we need to, or in any database engine, uh, but obviously in this course we're focused on Oracle, but sometimes we need to do a select statement, but we, we also need to embed or, or subquery with a different select statement. And there's lots of different reasons that we would do this, um, but we're going to go through some of the examples of when you would use a subquery. For the most part, subqueries can fall in any of these clauses. They could be in a select clause, in the from clause, the where clause, uh, group by, having, but not typically order. So you normally wouldn't have a group or a, uh, a subquery in the order by. Uh, but most of these other ones, you could have a, um, you could have a subquery. First, we're going to talk about single row. These are the simplest ones, a single row query. So let's take a look at an example. Now, before we did, before we talk about um, uh, doing subqueries, without doing a subquery, if I wanted to find the um, uh, a list of all of my publishers where the um, uh, that have a book, or I'm sorry, a list of all of the books that have a price that is more than the, the digital electronics book. So a digital electronics book is $130. If I want to get a list of everybody that's more than $130, step number one is to query for the retail price of that book, which is $130. And then step two is to do a query where retail is greater than 130 So that gives me a short list of books that are less than, or I'm sorry, more than 130 So I've got three books that cost more than digital electronics. I could, however, do this with a um, uh, with a subquery. So here's an example of doing this with a subquery. So I'm still doing my select statement, but uh, but now instead of just saying where retail is greater than 130, I substitute the 130 for the entire select statement that gets me that value. In this case, the uh, uh, you know select retail from books where title is equal to digital electronics. So one of the ways that I always think about uh, subqueries is I take that, that whole table that I'm going to get back or that whole result set that I'm going to get back uh, and I sort of substitute my query for that. So I think to myself, okay, well, how did I get 130? I got it by doing a select retail from books where title is equal to this. And then I substitute that in par uh, parenthetically in the where clause, which you can see here. So a pretty basic example of uh, doing a subquery. And there's my results. So let's take another example. Um, let's say we want to find the publisher with the highest cost book, with the book that, that has the, the, the best profit, in other words. So who, who gives us the best profit? Um, now, you might think that we could do, well, first, let's start. We could find this the max retail cost. That's pretty easy. And we know that that's 85. But that doesn't give us the publisher's name. So you might think intuitively, well, we could add the uh, the publisher and then do a group by clause. The problem with that is um, that will give us a list of all of our publishers. So each distinct publisher will be listed along with their um, with their retail cost, which is okay with their max uh, profit rather, which is okay. I mean, it would give us a list and we could find it. But what if we have 10,000 publishers? That's a lot of people to look through to try to find the max. Um, so a group by really won't help us here but a subquery will. So we make a few minor changes here. So now we just select the profit and the publisher for each, uh, for each book. So just give me the profit and the publisher, um, but where the retail cost is equal to the max retail cost. So, uh, and if more than one have the same, uh, um, if more than one have the same profit that all happens to be the max, then I might get a couple different results here. But, you know, they're all, they're all in a tie, so I probably would want to see that in my results. So, again, uh, you know, same same thing happening here. We we know that we're looking for a uh, for a certain value. Um, we know how to get that with a select statement, and we just simply embed that in uh, in this case again in the where clause. I'm going to embed that um, uh, that statement, and there's my result. So we know that uh, Goodhart Wilcox has the uh, the book with the um, with the highest profit. So let's look at one more example of a single row. Um, we're going to put this time, instead of doing our um, 
our subquery in the where clause. Uh, this time I'm going to put it in the select clause. So we can also do it in the select clause. In this case, I'm going to do select title and retail cost, uh, as well as, so I'm going to do the title and the profit, and the profit minus the average. So this is going to tell me whether each one, uh, it's going to give me a sense of each publisher, whether they're above average or below average in profit. So, you know, is this a publisher that I'm making more money on or that I'm making less money on per sale? Um, now, the one problem with that, uh, and by the way, this is the results in the bottom there. So you've got that, that first numeric column is my, uh, is my actual profit, and the second one tells me how much above or below average they are. So you can see that that transistor electronics book is uh, giving me um, the $67 profit, which is pretty good. Uh, but that basic electronics book has a negative $116 profit, um, or negative 116 from the average. So it's way below the average because we don't make any profit on it. But in any event, going back up to the top of the screen, looking at the uh, select statement, one thing that's really important to, to bear in mind with this is that select has to return only one result. So you can't have, in, in other words, it, it has to be scalar. You can't have more than one result with the select statement in the select subquery, uh, because that will give you multiple rows. So again, all of what we've done so far, all of these sub-selects or sub-queries that we've done um, have been scalar. They've been single row results. If you have more than one row, uh, it's not going to work for you. You're going to get an error message. So let's look at multiple rows. How do we handle multiple rows, or where would multiple rows come in? The most common place to start with the multiple row, uh, or that you're going to find multiple row subqueries, is going to be in the WHERE clause. Um, but because it can have more than a single value, we have to use a special keyword, in this case, IN. We've used in before, and if you recall, the in keyword is when we're looking for something that is in a list. So it's a list of things. So any keyword that can handle lists of something, which we've covered before, would work here. Uh, so in this example, I'm selecting all the books where the title is in a list of titles from my orders. So maybe I have a list of, you know, a table with all my orders or my order line items or something. You know, don't worry too much about that. But either way, I'm selecting all my titles from my orders and I'm only selecting books that are in that list. Um, so this would show me all the books uh, that we've actually sold. So you can see here, there's my list of books that have actually been sold. Uh, and then likewise, I can reverse that and say not in. So show me a list that, of books that have not been sold, and that's only one. So that, uh, that U.S. Navy book's never been sold. These are some other operators that you can use with multi multiple row functions. So starting from the top, um, and you know it's it's probably a lot easier to uh, to visualize this. Uh, you know what? I'll get the uh, the number line out of my toolbox here. So let's uh, there it is. So we got our number line. Um, so let's say that in my subquery, all of my values fall in that range that you see in the number line in the shaded area. So in that blue shaded area, that's my range of values. So if I do greater than all, which is the first option, so if we're doing greater than all, that means it can be more than, it must be more than the highest value. So that red shaded area would be all the values that would get returned from my, uh, um, from my outer select. So the inner select is the shaded area in the middle. The outer select, um, the only values from the outer select that would, that would be true or that would meet the condition would be what you see there in the, on the, in the right hand side. And likewise, if I do less than all, that's less than the lowest value. So whatever the lowest value is, give me everything that's less than that lowest value. The any keyword is inclusive. So, uh, so when we do less than any, it means less than the highest value. So that means including all the values. So less than and including all the values in the set. Uh, so you can see that the shaded area is much larger. We're starting from the top of, of that with the greatest value going down. And then same thing on the, uh, in the other direction. So greater than any is more than the lowest value. So there's the shaded area that would get returned with that, uh, uh, with that query or with that keyword. And then equal any is really equivalent to in. So it's just where there's an overlap. So you could use in or you could do equal any. Either one would work. And you'll find with all this stuff, you know, and probably everything that we've talked to, I, you're probably starting to notice this now that, um, that you know, we're, we're starting to see different ways to do things uh, that, we do, that we've done before. And there's, there's lots of different ways to skin a cat with, with SQL. 
um, in all the database engines. There's lots of different ways to do a lot of this stuff. And uh, it's just a matter of which one is the most efficient. Uh, I mean, it really comes down to two things. What's the most efficient uh, in the database engine? Uh, and that's where we get into database tuning, which um, is probably beyond the scope of this course. But, um, but certainly knowing what's in the toolbox, what you can use, is certainly a help. Uh, and then the other piece to this is what's easier from, a, from an application standpoint. Um, you know, in, in the very beginning of this lecture, I showed you a couple different ways to... Um, you know, I, I showed you how you you could get the answer with the um, with the max uh, profit, but then I showed you a way to do it with a subquery. And in theory, with an application, you could write it to use both. It might be a little less efficient because you have to do a select twice from the database instead of just once. But um, again, it really depends. So let's take a look at a, uh, an example with multiple columns. So we talked about single row, and then we talked about how to handle multiple rows, um, but now we're going to talk about multiple columns. What do I do if I have multiple columns that, uh, um, that I need to do on a subselect? Uh, and the way you handle multiple columns is really, it's a join. It's essentially a join, and semantically it's a join when you think about it. Um, so in this example, I want to get the publisher, the title, the retail cost, and I want to get the public, uh, uh, the publisher's average. So each publisher is going to have their own average. But so, for example, Pearson's going to have their own average. I want to make sure each time I select Pearson, not only do I get the publisher, the title, and the profit, but I want to get the publisher's average profit as well. Um, and that's going to be, you know, multiple times for each uh, in in this table because we have, for example, Pearson multiple times. Now, normally you could do this with a join, and I've seen people do this. So we're not going to learn about views until the next unit. So the last unit in this course, we talk about views. And that's certainly one way you could solve this. You could create a view that gives you the publisher average uh, and includes the publisher's ID uh, that you use with what we've learned so far, which basically a view is nothing more than a, than a virtual table. But you could also just select that whole table. So, you know, previous to now, we've been doing joins by joining to a table. But... You don't have to join to a table. You could join to a virtual table, to uh, you know, a table in memory. In this case, um, selecting the publisher, the average retail cost, as pub average. So really, there's there's two columns being selected in that subquery in yellow. It's my publisher's name and then the average profit. Uh, and but and I'm aliasing that with the uh, with pub average or pub ABG. And I'm going to do that join using the publisher's name. So it's going to join the books table to this um, uh, to this virtual table. Of course, that that select publisher and then average that should also include a from uh, clause. I'm, I'm missing the from clause on there. I think I was running out of space on the uh, in my in my little command area there to put this on the pr in the presentation. But uh, but normally you would actually have to have a from on there as well. So it should say from books. Um, but in any event, uh, and we're going to do that join using publisher. So in my example, I can get that uh, that extra column I'm looking for without having to do you know a, a, a view or anything like that. Um, so this is how we can handle multiple columns. Correlated is is pretty simple. Basically, when, when we talk about correlated, it's any subquery that references something in the outer query. So you have the inner query, which in this case so is the uh, select title from orders where books.title equals orders.title. And notice that, uh, um, that we're referencing that books, the outer, the outer select. So, so we're referencing a value. So for each row that gets selected, it's going to also do the inner select. So up until now, the query plan in Oracle would, would most likely, it would, it would select the inner um, nested query first and then it would do the outer uh, query. But in this case, it's going to do the outer query. And for each of those, and there's the key word, is for each. Uh, if you have a programming background, this feels more like a for each. Um, but for each uh, result, it's going to do that inner select and, and see what the match is and give you the corresponding match. Um, 
or or it's only in this case we're going to uh, um, we're only going to show where the title exists in that select query. So for example, this will only give us a list of books uh, that have been ordered because it's coming from the orders table. In this example, I, we're going to nest one more layer here. Um, so for example, let's say I've got these two different tables. I've got uh, a table on the left, which is the uh, department number and the name of the department. And on the right, I've got all of my employees. And my employees um, have a department, so that's a foreign key. So department number is the foreign key to the department table. And then they each have a salary. And let's say somebody came to me and said, you know, what is the department name of the highest paid employee? So I need to take, I need to find the highest paid employee. So, so let me walk you through the logic on how I might do this. First, we would uh, identify what we need to find. So we know we need to find the highest paid employee. We need to find what department they're in. And we need to know the name of that department. So this is going to give us three nested uh, queries, or three queries. So I'm going to start with the innermost first, which is who's the highest paid employee? How do I find that? Well, it's pretty straightforward. We just do it. It's an aggregate function. So we select the max salary from employee, and that should give me the, uh, the salary. That should return the highest salary. Then how do I find the employee with that highest salary? And, and of course, I, you know, I, like we, we've talked about already, is we can't just do a comma and then employee and then do a group by, because that's going to give us all of the employees, um, you know, the max salary for all the employees, which obviously is not what we're looking for. So, um, so this is a perfect example of how we would use nested queries or subqueries, which makes sense here. We select the department number from employee uh, where the salary is equal to the max salary. So first we get the max salary. Then we get a list of department numbers that match that max salary, which is probably only going to be one department number. It is conceivable it could be more than two, but typically it would just be one, um, you know, unless you have lots of people making the highest salary. And then finally, we need to get the name of that department. So to get the name of that department, I do one more, uh, my outer select. So this is the parent select. So the, the, the outer nested um, query is going to be select name from department, where department number equals the department number of the employee, where the salary is equal to the max salary. So this is an example of how you can nest all these queries. Finally, we're going to do a merge. So this is a little different than what we've been talking about so far. Uh, it's not really a subquery. Um, I, I guess in some sense it is. This is a DML subquery. So we're using a subquery to do data manipulation. Um, so in other words, we have uh, multiple tables that we want to do updates from. So for example, uh, let's say we've got this old table on the left. Maybe this is our old employee table. And then we've got a new employee table. And for whatever reason, we need to merge these two together. Um, so we need to put these two together. Now, we've talked about how to merge two tables in the past. We used a union. So you know, we would take the first table, union it to the second table. You can think of merge as a little bit like a union, but more geared towards DML as opposed to um, just doing a select statement, uh, as opposed to viewing that data. So let's take a look at an example. So if we wanted to, in this example, basically what we're doing is, uh, and by the way, the colors should match up a little bit. We have employee, the new employee table is blue, and the old one is that shade of red. Uh, and all the yellow is the new keywords that we're learning. So uh, we would start with the merge into employees new. So what we're saying is um, it, the, the action that we want to take is going to be on the new employees table. Uh, and I'm just using new as an alias. So I have an employee table and an employees table. I know that might be a little confusing, but one's the new one, one's the old one. And, I, and, and in the very first part of my, my statement here, I'm, I'm aliasing the new one is new and the old one is old. So now we don't have to worry about employee. We're just, we've got new and we've got old. So we're going to merge into the new table using the old table. And we're going to do that on, so we have to have some values that are in common for Oracle to say, OK, which records match? What's go what am I going to use to match these two records together? In this case, we're going to use the social security number, the SSN field. So both the old employee table and the new employee table both have a social security number. So we can use those to, uh, to match the two. So then it's going to take the two both record sets. And if there is a match, so when matched, then it's going to do something. So when the social security numbers match, in this example, I, I'm telling Oracle to take the new 
name and set it to the old name. So it's whatever's in the old table is going to overwrite what's in the new table. And then I'm going to take the new salary and overwrite from the old salary. Now this probably isn't typically what you'd want to do in the real world. Um, I'm just showing you as, as an example. Um, you know, in reality, if I were merging two employee records, I probably would have to do um, two transactions. One to get, uh, well, I could do it in one transaction. I probably would skip the when match then. But either way, just understand that, that this is just an example. And, uh, and normally, you probably wouldn't overwrite somebody's uh, old salary or somebody's uh, new salary with their old salary because chances are their salary went up. Uh, and if you did this, their salary would go back down, which would obviously make some people very unhappy. But in any event, in this case, uh, our query is going to take the old name and set it that to the new name and take the old salary and set that uh, in the new salary. Um, so we're taking the old data and merging it on top of our new data. So we're basically going to overwrite the new data where the social security numbers match. And then, and here's the important part, where there is no match. So when not matched, then we're going to just insert that whole record. So, uh, so if there's no match in the old table for the new one, we're going to take whatever's in the old one and match it into the new one. And of course, we wouldn't normally go the other way around because why would you match the um, uh, the data in the old? Uh, why would you want to take stuff in the new table and put it in the old one? You normally wouldn't do that. You would take the old stuff that's not in the new one and get it all into the new one. So that's what my example here would do. And that's an example of a merge.